This presentation is about Howard Gardner's multiple intelligences. And so we have this Trivial Pursuit little game piece down here with the little trivial sections. Uh, and this is eight of the currently considered nine uh, multiple intelligences, uh, including bodily kinesthetic, linguistic, logical, mathematical, visual, spatial, musical, interpersonal, intrapersonal, and then naturalist, which is one of the new ones. Existentialist would be the other new one. Unfortunately, uh, the next slides are going to be uh, without the naturalist one, because those, the naturalist one and the existentialist one is, uh, are two proposed ones that uh, have not yet uh, formally been accepted as one of the uh, multiple intelligences. So let's look at the others. Okay, here's my little uh, chart for that, and so it's just got the one less uh, pie piece to it, and so let's look at each one of these. So here's our part with the, uh, you know, verbal linguistic, you notice in the pie piece over on the left in yellow it says word smart, uh, would be a, a more um, um, common way of, of describing this kind of intelligence is this, this, your intelligence for words. Uh, Well-developed verbal skills and sensitivity to the sounds, meanings, and rhythms of words. Logic smart is, is formally labeled mathematical logical intelligence. And this is probably the two of these, verbal intelligence and mathematical logical, and to some extent the next one, visual spatial, are the traditional uh, things that are measured for intelligence. Uh, if you take an IQ test, um, it, depending on which one you take, it may be more focused on verbal or mathematical or visual spatial. Um, um, but, but those are the, uh, and it might not have one of those three, but that, that's the traditional IQ test would be these, these um, kinds of things. And, and, and these are categories that we can all pretty much easily comprehend. Um, so let's look at some of the others that are probably newer and aren't commonly thought of as, as part of intelligence. Um, so we've got interpersonal intelligence. Um, and so that's people smart. Um, interpersonal intelligence would be people like politicians would have, uh, to some extent, uh, good people smarts. Psychologists probably have good uh, people smarts. Um, the capacity to de detect and respond appropriately to the moods, motivations, and desires of others. Musical intelligence, ability to produce and appreciate rhythm. So when we say this person is a genius, Mozart was a genius. Well, we're not really talking about Mozart as being a genius as, uh, uh, in relation to uh, verbal word intelligence or logical uh, mathematical or spatial intelligence, what we're really talking about is musical intelligence. Um, bodily kinesthetic uh, intelligence, ability to control one's body movements. So, uh, you know, a lot of people in my age would have said that uh, Muhammad Ali, Cassius Clay, was a genius at boxing. Uh, but uh, others would say he's, he's a genius. Yeah, Michael Jordan was just incredibly uh, talented, and so that's the bodily kinesthetic, which is controlled by the mind, and, and so, um, yeah, why, why wouldn't that be a, a form of genius or intelligence? Then there's the self-smart, uh, intrapersonal intelligence, capacity to be self-aware and in tune with the inner feelings, values, beliefs, and thinking processes uh, of yourself. The two newer ones are naturalistic intelligence, the ability to recognize this kind of like a pattern recognition, um, people who are really smart in biology uh, and the natural sciences probably would have a gift in, in the natural intelligence area. And existential intelligence would be more um, philosophers uh, and, and spiritual leaders, because uh, they're, they're more sensitive to the capacity to tackle deep questions about human existence. Um, so, so those are two of the newer ones that, that are being currently discussed as to being included in the multiple intelligence. And Howard Gardner, when he first conceived of this, argued that there could be a, a multitude, uh, and he just proposed several to get us started, which is the, the uh, original seven, okay? And, and obviously, the, the original seven are made up of three that are 
what we would traditionally uh, call intelligence. All right, some general issues. The, the reason that Gardner came up with this was one of the hot debates in education was nature versus nurture. Uh, and and uh, a lot of the IQ advocates were basically arguing in favor of nature, that you were just born with a certain intelligence. And, and really, Gardner has proposed this to wrap around the idea of nurture um, uh, more so than nature, that you can nurture each of these different intelligences. You can encourage the growth in each of these intelligences. Multiple intelligence is totally against standardized testing. Uh, again, this is the, the sort of the background of this. Uh, if you want to judge someone's uh, bodily kinesthetic intelligence, you can't really test that on a multiple choice test. Um, assessment tends to be more pro portfolio based, performance based. Uh, um, rubric. So a great way to test musical intelligence is to have them play whatever instrument they're, they're able to play or sing or, or um, produce music in whatever way um, they're able to do that. Okay. So why bother with multiple intelligences? Uh, well, frankly, in education, we're all about nurture. Um, I mean, that is pretty much what we're trying to do is nurture uh, our, our learners. And even if you're working in business and industry, uh, you, you're still trying to nurture, get, get, get uh, um, employees excited about the content that you're teaching. You wanna get, you, you're not focusing on whether they have the capacity to learn. We all, every one of us, want all of our students uh, to learn. And so, uh, so we want to foster that intelligence. That, that development. We have to develop all students in all ways. Uh, so, I mean, if you focus just on, on reading, writing, and arithmetic, um, you're not really developing the student completely. And so I think it's really good to take advantage of, of, of these other things. Take their strengths. I mean, I have kids that come to my class, or, or kids, uh, mostly I teach adults. Uh, I have students that come to my class that bring wealth of, of, of expertise in some area or, or an intelligence in some area. Take advantage of that. Use that and tie that into what, they're, the, what you're trying to nurture uh, with whatever it is that you're trying to teach. How do I use multiple intelligence? Well, there's a really nice website uh, that Disney created. Um, that uses two approaches. They call them incorporate into subject matter and, and demonstrate uh, understanding. So the, the incorporate into subject matter is more teacher-centric, uh, and the demonstrate understanding is more student-centric. Uh, uh, so uh, as I say here, materials that I gather for student use versus um, um, activities I require and materials students create would be the demonstrate understanding category. All right, so materials I gather. If I'm going to do that for, for a class, I try to limit myself to two or three of the intelligences. Uh, you don't want to bring all, if, if you include all, the, all nine of them uh, to, the, to, the, to the experience. But when I'm designing a specific lesson, I might uh, not only use verbal, but I might try to use kinest bodily kinesthetic. Or uh, if the focus is on logical mathematical, I might also include musical. Or uh, so you bring one of the other intelligence. You 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 look at your wheel and, and say, okay, well I'm going to teach this, which is primarily verbal linguistic, uh, but I'm going to think about also incorporating this other in intrapersonal uh, intelligence into this activity. Okay. So, and I list a bunch of different things. There are art, music, field trips, teamwork, physicalizing. Physicalizing would be, we used to do this a lot with an old programming language called Logo, where, where the computer screen had a little triangle that was supposed to be a turtle. And so you could tell it to move forward 50 steps, which was 50 pixels. So it would draw a line um, in the direction that it was heading uh, with 50 pixels. And so if you want them to draw a square, what you'd have them do is, is to pr pretend they're the turtle and walk. Well, now what do you do? You walk 50. If you're going to make a square, what do you have to do? Well, I have to turn right. How much do you have to turn? You have to turn 90 degrees. So you physicalize. You, you, you kind of get them to be the turtle. Um, rhythmic exercises uh, for a variety of different things. To get, give them time. You know, one of the really important parts of cr uh, creativity is, is an opportunity for uh, incubation and reflection 
that you might even uh, tie into meditation, which might even tie into um, uh, the existentialist intelligence. Use nature walks, uh, class pets, wa uh, working on causes uh, for uh, interpersonal intelligence, religious activities. So again, you, these are just some ideas for thinking about when I have a lesson, what else can I uh, bring to bear on this? And, and as I note here, it fits in nicely with another uh, chapter that we learn about called resource-based learning. Uh, what resources do you bring to, to that activity? So those are some ideas for, for the more teacher-centric teacher uh, application of multiple, multiple intelligences. So on the student side, uh, it works really nicely with something like project-based uh, learning because you get to uh, have them choose to do so. So if, if the topic that you're teaching is, um, I don't know, let's say it's, it's middle school social studies and they have to study Japan. Well, they, they could write something. Uh, they could create, uh, they could uh, debate the pros and cons of, of some issue that, that's cur current in, uh, in Japan. They could create songs. They could do dramatic en enactments. They could do videos. You could give them these opportunities for the kinds of materials that they create, which are all each focused on a different intelligence. You wouldn't have them do necessarily all of them. Again, you don't want to bring multiple intelligences to the classroom and say, okay, every time I do something, I've got to do all of them. You really, you can focus on one or two of them, okay? Okay, project-based learning, informed by cognitive apprenticeships, uh, the six C's of motivation, resource-based learning, and now multiple intelligences. So, so pro project-based learning is one of the two inquiry approaches that I advocate in, in this class. Uh, cognitive apprenticeships really talks about what you need to do uh, as the guide on the side. The six C's of motivation really helps you to lab to really encourage uh, a high motivation. Resource-based learning is, is, as they're engaged in the project, one of the things that you'll be doing is trying to find resources for them to use to, to, to complete the project. And now I, we're introduced to the idea of multiple intelligences. And so um, that's another lens in which to look at the, the idea of project-based learning. Okay? All right. The other part of the topic in the multiple intelligences chapter was learning styles. And so uh, there's a link to the VARC self-assessment. I, I, I did the little activity for uh, multiple intelligences, and I also did the VARC self-assessment. And here's how I scored. I scored six for the kinesthetic, five for the visual, three for read, write, and zero for, for listening. Um, how do you account for these differences in a single classroom? So let's say you have, you have some of them are kinesthetic, some of them are visual, and a little bit rewrite, and then nobody's oral. Well, that kind of eliminates the activity that I'm doing right now that you're listening to. Um, so, so, and kinesthetic, how do you do an online course that really leverages kinesthetic? I don't, I don't know, but those are things to, to, to think about. I mean, visual, here here you have this nice slide. I'm not sure what that graphic up in the top uh, is supposed to mean, uh, but um, uh, that's an adornment graphic, I guess. Um, anyway, so how do you account for all these differences? And, and probably the answer is that you need to be changing up your activities all the time. You should have a kinesthetic thing. You should have a visual. You know, one of the things they talk about in adult learning is that adults really need to be kinesthetic as well. And so just sitting quietly in a seat isn't going to work regardless of age level. Okay. Uh, so, by the way, my strengths in the multiple intelligence activity were interpersonal, spatial, logical, verbal, in that order, uh, not kinesthetic. So, um, interestingly, the read-write uh, learning style was pretty low for me, uh, and yet it, verbal comes out as one, two, three, fourth in my, out of uh, eight intelligences, or seven intelligences, not, uh, not kinesthetic. And yet, kinesthetic was the highest one in my, so even though they're using the same words, uh, kinesthetic and, and learning uh, styles versus kinesthetic and intelligences are two, uh, two different constructs. So kinesthetic and, and multiple intelligences and aptitude for it um, in learning styles, it's a preference for how you learn. All right. So I brought up the idea of online learning, and one of the popular constructs from online learning is the idea of blended learning. 
is the organization and distribution of all available facilities, technology, media, and materials to achieve uh, an instructional goal, even when many of these things may overlap. So that's what blended learning is. Um, so, so you might have uh, opportunities that are visual. So, so for example, in this uh, th this particular class, I've I've got a PowerPoint slide that's visual. You hear me talking, which is oral, and you have access to the chapter on multiple intelligences and learning styles to read, which is more verbal. So, um, so there's there's many ways of doing that. Now, again, one of the 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 more problematic thing to do in an online class is how you get people to be kinesthetic. And so, why doesn't everybody stand up right now and uh, um, and think? about multiple intelligences why you run in place. No, not really. That doesn't have anything to do with kinesthetic other than you're actively engaged, but that's good. You should probably do that. Okay. Uh, a word about learning styles. I think that these are real. I think that they fluctuate based on background knowledge, type of learning, motivation, and an innate style of learning. Uh, you should consider them when you're when you're designing instruction, but they're, they are a moving target. Uh, so they're, you can't just say, okay, this person is one of these, and then, and then that's it. Okay. Uh, 